What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of RimWorld. In the previous episode, we had a couple problems, I mean we got attacked by a lot of the raiders, and so we've got some things that we need to think about in this episode. So one of the big problems that we had come across previously was a major issue in, well, there's a couple things. I was kind of eyeballing the map in between episodes, because before I do an episode, I like to familiarize with whatever, you know, struggles we had been going through in our current series. And with this game, we've got a couple things that we want to think about during the course of this episode. First and foremost, I need these bodies hauled. Like, that's not even, like, optional. So just, like, do that right now, Rimworlders. And once you get rid of all the dead bodies, then I can be pleased with you and no longer want to beat you to death with a pointy stick. So, after we do that... Squirrel has lost his mind, and it, while it raises questions about whether you should ever trust a man named Squirrel's men like mental faculties, at the same time, we do need him back on the job because we are down a guy right now. The other thing is that all of our guys have decent weapons at the moment. I mean, they don't have incredible weapons. Everybody's got a pistol. What do we have over here in the stockpile? We got, like, sniper rifles. Okay, those aren't going to help. Sniper rifles, completely and totally worthless in this game. Don't even bother with them. They have such a long cast time. I call it a cast time because that's what it is to me. Like, you see that little bar moving around, and it reminds me of a cast time from an MMO. Oh, he's got no gun. Okay, well, you go get a pistol then, Cross. Why don't you have a pistol? Maybe he got knocked down in the last fight. But anyways, things that we want to think about. We need to actively start working on our power situation, because our power plant is producing enough electricity right now, and we are staying current with the amount of electricity that we're using, and then also I need to run a wire right there. I noticed that in between episodes as well, so maybe I'll do that right now. Let me drop everybody here, and I'm going to go to my structural menu, and we'll go power conduit, and we'll just run one to right there, and that should fix the problem. Our backup power will be complete, which is one of the big problems that we hadn't been able to deal with lately. So there we are. Our power is now flowing along three different transits. So we got here, here, and here. So you've got main power from there, secondary power from there, in case the power gets cut from over here, which I don't know why it would ever would, but, you know, whatever. It's just something extra to think about. And then we've also got this one right here to make sure that if any of our turrets blow up, it doesn't cut the main power to the rest of our base. And what's going on here? We have a cargo unit from our ship. Let's go ahead and take a look at the location where that has dropped and if it's going to be anywhere near us. It is not, however it is a bunch of useful stuff. I'm not going to unflag it right now. We did have a big mining operation going on over here for the main purpose that we had not had enough metal in order to get our job done properly. And so, in the interest of keeping ourselves well metal, I mean, we got to make sure that we have lots of moon sorrow going on. we got to make sure that there's tons of Amon and Marth playing at all times. We need loads and loads of metal around here because this is a pretty metal existence. We're living in a cave, stocked with machine guns and explosives, eating paste off the ground, and then killing people every few days. That's a pretty metal existence right there. I mean, if we added me to the equation, I think that's about the only way it be could, like, become more metal at all. So, other things, we need to get a hydroponics growth going because I don't want to farm outside anymore. That's a big weakness in our base. It's a security weakness. It's a problem with the way that we choose to run everything. And so, if we can get rid of these two fields right here and get everything growing hydroponically underground, I think we're going to be in a lot better shape. A trade ship? Oh, I didn't read that properly here. Let's go... It is a farming wessel. Well, the farming wessel does not appear to have anything that I want. They have a little bit of metal right there which could work out for us, but it doesn't appear as though anybody has deemed it necessary to haul any silver. Oh good, there's a bunch of fires going outside too. I love it when the periphery of our home is on fire. What more could I ask for in life than a burning home? A home that burns with a warmth of a hundred lives. But anyways... Once we get this mining job done, people are pretty miserable with the mining, but it's okay. Everybody is stabilized right now with regards to their mental attributes, so that should be fine. We want to install a few more batteries once we've got ourselves some more electricity and once we've got some more battery. I'm sorry, once we've got some more metal. And so as you can see, we're a little bit low up here in the le top left-hand corner on most of the resources that we're going to need. That's largely because we haven't started trading yet. What I'd like to happen, actually, while we're on the subject here, I would like you guys... Is it in the buildings menu, or it, is it in the furniture? There it is. We need a drop beacon. So there we are. And that is the drop beacon so that they can drop bacon that we can then consume and be happy because our society has no bacon at the moment. And you would think that the running humor about bacon would get old, but it's like fart jokes. It never gets old. It's wood jokes, fart jokes, bacon jokes. They never seem to get old on the internet. It's one of those things that people seem to have like an infinite tolerance for. The point at which a man gives up his tolerance for bacon humor, I think that's the point at which I can no longer know him. That is a man for whom I no longer have respect. No, I'm kidding. I don't care. A mysterious blight has killed all of our crops. Well, that's not anything that happens rarely. We should also probably get rid of this right here to ensure that everybody stops eating nutrient paste and starts eating the actual meals that we've been preparing for them. For we have set a place for our people, and we have made food for them. And so we should probably make it so that they're not eating goo anymore. 
because goo is pretty awful. I had to be on a jello diet one time for like a week and a half, and you would think that delicious, delightful sugar treats would be amazing, but after about a day, you're like, all right, I'm done with jello. No more jello. I don't care what color it is orange, green, purple, red. I mean, I may have some purple. If you've got some purple, then I suppose I'll have purple. But beyond that, please take the jello away from me. I would prefer that my. I would prefer that my meals no longer jiggle. I don't want them to move when you place them down in front of me. I, I want them to steam or perhaps bubble, but jiggle, no. Absolutely not. This will not be a point at which we commence the jiggling, to quote the Aqua Teen Hunger Force character. Happy Time Harry, and what was the name of the other guy? I don't know, it's been a while since I've watched those. I have all of the box sets, but it's been a really long time since I've watched Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I remember Happy Time Harry just because he's probably one of the funniest characters I've ever seen, and also because he was voiced by David Cross, as I recall. And David Cross is one of my favorite people in the entire world, just one of my favorite people in general. Comedian, actor, whatever. He's hilarious. There is nothing David Cross can do no wrong. I think I'm going to get a hydroponics grow going right here. And I think that should be about enough space for us. Are we done with this mining job over here? Almost. We're almost there. Although I would assume that everybody that's been working on it for so long is probably going to be really, really good at mining. Yeah, there's 11 mining right there. So more or less topped out. Everybody should be pretty good at mining in your society if you're building properly. Now, we'd be dead by now. Like, why are we building into the walls? Well, I've already told you guys that. That's because largely we wanted this kill room right here. If you don't have this kill room, I don't see you surviving very long by comparison to the enemies that will come for you. They will come for you, and they will take you in the night, and it will be very, very unpleasant in sort of a booty warrior-ish like warrior type of way. I don't know if I could say that word properly. I really had to enunciate it. We've got... A blight has killed our crops again? No. We've got a cargo unit that has crashed nearby. I should probably be getting rid of these. Yeah, it's still too far away. I don't care. I should probably be clicking those off while we're playing, but unfortunately it hasn't been happening. The other thing that I'd like to get ready for is I would really like to have another storage room right here. And then down here on this side, we'll probably start building a few more rooms. We may make a secondary thoroughfare down and around this way so that they can get there quicker. I don't know. Another one? God, there is just cargo falling from the heavens all over the place. You would think that all of the debris, the detritus from our ship would have fallen by now, but I guess not. The other thing that we're going to need is while they're mining in the darkness, they are really, really at risk for going crazy. And so the other thing that we need is to make sure... Let's go to our furniture menu. Let's give them a couple of standing lamps down in here. I mean, we could do a sitting lamp, but the sitting lamps yawn a lot, and they're kind of lazy, and they just kind of bring everybody down. The sitting lamps, they ruin morale, and I feel as though our lamps need to be standing at all times. Otherwise, I'm just not happy with them. And so if we hear people going depressed and trying to kill themselves now because I gave them mining duty, I will be displeased with them. There we go. So now we've got a lamp up. We've got to decide, oh, we need grow lamps. We don't need these lamps. We need grow lamps, not standing lamps. The sun lamps right here are what we need. I would say that I would love for all of this to be hauled very, very shortly. And in prioritizing the hauling for it, I think I might be shooting myself in the foot for getting other jobs done. And there are a lot of guns around, so your chance... I mean, I feel as though our chance of shooting ourselves in the foot is going up logarithmically here, where we really have a lot of chances of shooting ourselves in the foot right now, so I would prefer to keep our feet unshot. I like my feet. They're a small target as it stands right now, and I don't want them to be shot. So anyways, we need to do sun lamps. And so I would like to lay out the hydroponics basins first before I do anything else. And so with the hydroponics basins, I don't place these very often. Like, it's rare that I get this far into the game. So you'll have to bear with me for a moment. And the way that I like to do these, or the way that I have done them in the past, is something like this. And then what we'll do, and this may be overkill, I'm not trying to run these at optimal capacity right now. What we'll do is we'll just kind of put the sun lamps all over the place. They are going to cost us electricity. But we're about to install some new solar solutions as well. We didn't, didn't we in this playthrough? Maybe that's my other playthrough. I thought we had another geothermal generator around somewhere. And unfortunately, it does not appear to be the case. So anyways, let's get people to work doing all of these little things. It's going to cost us a lot of metal to get this done. Hopefully, we don't get raided for the remainder of this episode. I would absolutely be enamored with the fact that we were not raided if we could make it that far. We'll also keep an eye on our power solution, which I think is probably going to fall off on us pretty quickly. And so what you will notice... Oh, we need to run a conduit as well. Let's run a conduit down and in here. There we are. 
and that conduit should keep us rolling. We need to do a secondary one right here as well to go down the hallway because I am going to have them mine it out a little bit further. We have an industrial trader coming in, and that's exactly what we didn't need right now. We need a weapons trader. If we can't get a weapons trader, our life is going to become very, very difficult. So the rotation you want to move into at this point in the game is that you really want to start thinking about where your next meal, where your next gun, where your next food, where your next metal is coming from. You really want to make sure that you've got kind of a rotation. We don't have enough colonist beds. That means... Ooh, that's unfortunate. Who's the one without a bed right now? It's got to be Squirrel. Did he die of exhaustion? Where is he? Squirrel! Where are you? I would like to talk to you, Squirrel. Oh, he died, didn't he? That's... I saw somebody come down here. I saw somebody carry somebody down here. There's Jimmy. There's Dylan. There's Frog the Assassin. I think it would have been better if he was a bounty hunter, if he was Frog the Bounty Hunter. That would have been amazing, and I would have tried to recruit him in a heartbeat. I don't know where Squirrel went. He's probably... Oh, he's right there on my screen. Is he going crazy yet? No, he's still good. He's absolutely perfectly fine. So, now that Squirrel is okay, let's get to work. I'm going to put down a temporary sleeping spot for him. So, we may, I think, put him right there. There we are. So, we have a temporary sleep spot. And a local squirrel has gone mad. It's now coming after everybody. And so we've got to watch out for squirrels. Which is unfortunate. And then we will put our other transit. Like so. And then we've got raiders as well. So we want to make sure... That's a pretty hefty group of raiders. Let's take a look at what their weapons are. Pistolas, that's bad, because if they had really badass guns, they probably won't have frag grenades. And so there it is. That's what we want to watch out for, is those fraggles. So we have two people with frag grenades. That's a big, major issue. So as always, frag grenades are overpowered right now within the confines of the game. They try to balance themselves out by being like, oh, but you have to carry them really close to the enemy. But they are a one-shot, one-kill as the game goes right now, and so you need to be very, very careful about them. I'm going to go ahead and power up all the guns, just in case anybody comes at me. I don't know if we have enough guns right now to actually survive this attack. And so the other thing that I would more than likely recommend is that maybe we put in another improvised turret right there. And then like another one maybe right there. And we just kind of see if they can get it done before all this happens. And then what I would do is I would cancel out that work right there. And I would automatically assign somebody to... These have already been prioritized by somebody. Okay. So we've got a little bit of time. We may be able to squeeze these in before anything else terrible happens. But I can't really guarantee it. With our stacks of metal so far away... We may not be able to get the job done, especially since they're doing a bunch of farming and all kinds of crazy shit when they should be doing, like, really kind of job-required tasks. Yeah, the metal's too far away. We're not going to get it in in time, I don't think. Well, we may get one in in time. So the raiders are finished repairing and have begun their assault. Let's go ahead and take everybody in. Squirrel needs a gun. So let's grab him a gun. Actually, there's one right there. Good. So we'll grab him a gun off the floor. Big Cook, we need you in here. Actually, Big Cook, go stand outside and bait everybody. And so there they are. Big Cook is now the bait for our trap. And so now that he has baited the trap, we will get him the hell out of there. Everybody else needs to be on their guard. And so the way that I would prefer that this go down is that we just kind of have people spread around all over the place. And so we've got a big old alarm going right now. If we survive this one, this is a big hit. And it will be a testament to our defenses if we can manage to survive our way through this. So I'm going to strap people in the corners. Where is Montoya going? Okay, Montoya's right there. And so the big thing we need is for anybody with a frag grenade to die like right now. Fantastic. So we seem to be doing all right. 
We have a grenade out, and we're gonna see where it lands. So let's go ahead and get them the hell away. That may cut the power to some of these turrets, which would be a major issue for us. Ah, critical alert, and Nessa needs rescue. Okay, so rescue Anessa and extract her. You guys all get up in here. Okay, so they're now running away. So we can release everybody from their earthly duties. Although sometimes your earthly duty just needs to be released. I mean, every now and again, you just kind of got to let it go. It's part of life. And so now that she's asleep and Nessa should be okay, we'll take Big Cook off the job. And everybody should just go straight to sleep now. Because they're in darkness, we need to make sure what has gone wrong. Oh, we're out of battery power, interestingly enough. Okay, well, let's cut all the turrets out then. We didn't lose any turrets during that play, so that's amazing. All the lights should come back on in just a second, I think. I don't think we're running enough lights to really kind of ruin our lives here, but we may be able to. And then from there, we need to put up the solar generators, so it is time. The time has come. So let's put in solar generators everywhere that we can. So we'll put in... I'm pretty pleased with something like that right there. And it may be due to the fact that the grow lights are actually using everything up, so that could be our other problem. Now, why do you want to do hydroponics? Well, hydroponics are really useful to you because they grow around the clock. Now, the plants that are outside, the plants outside only grow when the sunlight is on them. So the plants inside grow 24 hours a day, which means you're going to be getting high yields like all the time, which is pretty badass. It's a good, good thing. Let's move some of these guns around because I do want to make some money once we get a weapons trader. And then past that point... We'll start having people haul out the dead bodies. I mean, they always have the tendency to sort of ignore that job. And what we'll do now... We'll run a conduit to there. We'll just kind of link all of these together. And then I think six of these should give us enough surplus power to make our lives a little bit easier. But as it stands right now, if we get hit by another group of raiders, we are going down. So we need to get our power back and squared away. Very, very badly, in fact. The industrial trader has taken off. Hopefully she'll make some more meals. Okay, that's good. And so let's get ourselves powered now. We want to pay attention to our output. We should be able to get a full day of power in right now. A power day. That sounds like the sort of day that you go to the gym like really hard. You're just like, a power day! And your voice gets all deep and you start growing a beard just from the exertion. Even you ladies, growing beards from the exertion. It's what happens. I mean, hey. These things are what they are. Oh, we do have another one right there. It's kind of hidden in the ground, so I may try and do another one right there too. Because having two of these under our control, two geothermal generators, would be really, really, really badass. Now, as you can see, our batteries are recovering very, very rapidly. And so that makes me happy. What we want to worry about now is the cleaning of the dead bodies... We didn't capture anybody on that one, which is disappointing. I also think we want to focus on beautification. Now, I don't know how often we're going to get... Or if this is going to be enough food for our entire colony. And so I'm going to start by eliminating this potato field first. So let's go through to our zoning menu, which is going to be right here. And then we will remove a zone. And I am totally and completely... There it is. Totally and completely blanking. So we'll get rid of that potato field so that we're only having to tend this right here. Free us up for a little bit of extra time. I'd also like to pan through and make sure that everybody's witnessed somebody's death time seven. Yeah, that'd be kind of crazy. Just watching people die left and right. Or right and left. It depends. I don't know what direction they died from first. I wasn't paying too much of a... T uh, we got a bunch of... Apparently I didn't get my hands on all of those. Which might explain... What is going on here? Oh, they changed my hotkey on me. Okay, so let's go empower those all off now. We've got the strawberry harvest going, and things are looking pretty good for our little colony. I mean, we could really, really, really use a weapon trader, though. That's the major, major concern that I have, is if we can't get ourselves a weapon trader soon, we are going to find ourselves very, very deficient when it comes to metal. We've got a lot of very varies in this episode, but believe me, they are a problem. I should probably also hunt out some of these rats and stuff right here. A traveler named Albina is passing by. She is a civil surgeon. 
or a civil servant, not a civil surgeon. I don't think we're going to make it to Albina in time unless she's cutting... Well... What are his needs right now? Is he bummed out? He's pretty bummed out, so I don't think I want to draft him. We need to find somebody who's not in a bad mood to draft up. There we go. That'll work. So go get Albina, because we could use extra people in our colony now. And as soon as Anessa is back up and running, or at least back up and walking, back on her feet in general, we'll give her her shotgun back. We'll probably be okay. Let's haul some of these dead guys, too. I'm tired of having everybody walk by dead people every time. Well, first things first, grab your shotgun. And then we will prioritize hauling Stonejaw. You probably got that from getting punched a lot, I bet. A guy that gets punched a ton and doesn't get knocked out, I'd name him Stonejaw, too. Raiders have landed nearby again. Damn. Okay, so we're getting really unlucky here. M24, frag grenades. M24, M24, Molotovs. That's actually really, really good for us. Because it will allow us to dispose of all these bodies down here, finally. So even though we haven't even hauled out the bodies from the first excursion into Kill Land. Big Cook, why are you just standing around, bud? There we go. I had to reset his pathfinding. He's fine now. Everything is okay with Big Cook. Oh, we need to undraft her. Because she's starving to death and about to go crazy. Allow everybody a little bit of sunlight while we wait. And then I need to enable her as a prisoner. Not for vicious beatings, but for a vicious chat. A bout of the intimidation. And once the raiders decide that they're going to come at us... What I'll do instead is let's cut all these lamps because they aren't even doing anything right now. And so in cutting the lamps, I'm going to have everybody come back inside. Well, we'll be right here. And then we've cut all of the lamps, which means we're now gaining power at a very, very fast rate. A local boom rat has gone crazy. Oh, I need to power these back on. Come back online, please, I beg you. And then let's distribute everybody for the battle with no regrets. I actually think it's probably a better idea to like put them up against walls and stuff. Just to make sure that no accidents happen. Because your own turrets will shoot you, by the way. Your own turrets will waste you. Okay, so one guy down already. The others are now piling into the building. Hopefully we don't have anybody that starts to go crazy. Oof. Big hit right there on Anessa. Unfortunately, that guy has cover. The game has some weird corners. I'll leave it like that. Like, right now, she's still trying to fire at Anessa. It's a weird state that the game is in right now where there's some kind of, like, peekaboo mechanic in place. But not quite. And we need to kill Levin very, very badly. There we go. So Levin is now dead. Oof. I love the gun sound effects, by the way, in this game. It's one of my favorite things about the game, in fact. Go ahead and let everybody off duty now. And we may lose two. Well, maybe not. Should be okay. Everything will be fine. And I think this is probably a decent place to break off the episode. I feel like we've accomplished enough in this episode to where we can move forward... It's one of those games where you really want to make sure you get something done every episode. Let's power all this down, though, before I go. And then we will power all this up before we go. And so there we are. My name is Plattercat. Thank you for joining me here in New Guapington for another episode of RimWorld. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.